Hey everybody, guess what? It's story time with Razmir, and in the spirit of Halloween, I have decided to read you some most frightening literature. <laughs> and what frightening literature, you ask? Why none other than Frankenstein! Yes, a terrifying story of mad scientists and the horrible things they do when trying to play God. Now, for time restraints, I have abridged certain parts of this epic tale. And, for you younger viewers, I shall try to use a more modern vocabulary. Now, let's get started, shall we? Frankenstein. Yes. November the 5th. Oh, woe is I. My mother is dead, and I feel absolutely horrible. No one on earth could ever possibly know what I'm going through right now. I promise that one day I shall conquer the forces of nature rather than learn to cope with my grief and move on with my life. January 9th. Now I'm off in college and studying alchemy. All my teachers say the same thing over and over again. You Frankenstein, that alchemy is nothing but horse holly, horse holly, you hear? Three generations worth of scientific study have proven it completely bogus. Get your head out of the clouds and learn some real science, darn nation. But I don't care. I want to break all the rules of nature anyway. It's not like anything bad's ever happened when people try to play God. Besides, those nice Elric brothers, Edward and Al, are willing to help me out a little. They miss their mummies too, just like me. Oh, woe and wah. Let's see. August 7th. I have discovered a way to reanimate dead flesh. I'm not going to go any further super cool scientific details because I know nobody really wants to hear about any of that. Heaven forbid I should write anything interesting in this diary of mine. I do wish I had an assistant, though. He could have a hunched back and a googly eye and an interesting and unique name like Igor or Igor or even Billy. But I don't. So, a loss. May 39th. Dear God, I've done it. I've done it. It's alive. It's alive! I have reanimated a corpse. He opened his eyes, stood up, smiled at me, and then waved hello. And he started to walk forward. Never have I been more terrified in my life. I mean, sure, this is what I've wanted, and it's been my exact life goal for as long as I can possibly remember, but I didn't think you'd be so scary. With those friendly smiles and innocent eyeballs and a desire for a hug, so I ran into my room and boarded up the door with all the furniture in sight, and then I took a nap. June first and a half. When I woke, I thought that the whole terrible episode was nothing more than a horrible, horrible nightmare. After all, I do love drinking a bottle of that stuff with the green fairy on the label right before I go and work in the lab. However, my deepest fears were realized when the abomination that I spawned last night came charging in my room with a terrifying tray of toast and scrambled eggs, bellowing at the top of his lungs. Hello, father. I'll let you breakfast. I hope you like it. I was scared senseless and ran screaming out the open window. Thankfully, it was on the first floor. It was then I realized that the only way to take care of my problem was to run as far away from it as possible like a scared, frightened schoolgirl. Sep March 13th. I am beginning to suspect it was not the best of ideas to purchase my calendars at a novelty joke shop. However, on a trip to the Swiss Alps, I was confronted by the very beast that I had spawned in my lab all those sentences ago. He came charging at me in large, gaping strides, and I feared that this would trigger an epic battle of ginormous proportions between creator and creation. Good versus evil. Ro battle royale to the death. A final, ultimate showdown. Much to my relief, he only wanted to talk about what he'd been doing while I'd been gone. And so, he began to tell me about his long, boring life story about how he'd learned to read and speak properly by stalking and spying on some family in the woods. He proceeded to tell me their life story afterwards, which was, of course, long and pointless. 
And then he went on and on and on about how he later became the lead singer in a screaming emo death metal band that had one hit album that nobody bought. I mean, he just wouldn't shut up. It's like he assumed that I cared, let alone was interested in anything he had to say. But he just kept yammering on and on and on like an idiot. Finally, I had enough. After hinting that my friends were calling me and that it was getting late, I begged and pleaded for him to just shut up! So, he responded and said he would leave me alone on one condition. I shall leave you alone on one condition. If you make me a nice girlfriend. Just do that, and I'll take her to the Amazon jungle, where we will live happily there, never to bother you or anyone else ever again. Well, what are you going to do there? I asked the creature. Well, her and I, Dad, won't be nothing but mammals, so we'll do it like they do on the Discovery Channel. Oh, God! Oh. Oh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, I asked, I replied. In my haste for some peace and quiet, I agreed. Mad Scientist Log, Stardate 1337. I am hard at work creating a female for my monster, so he'll finally leave me the hell alone. The creature keeps looking over my shoulder to check my progress. It's starting to get on my nerves. He won't stop complaining about her bust size. Not too small. Make her bigger. She's too old looking. I like redheads. He was really annoying, so I just pulled the plug and scrapped the project. This seemed to anger him for some reason, and he was all swearing revenge and threatening the life of everything I ever cared about and all that, and I'm going to get you on your wedding night, or whatever that means. On my wedding night. I probably shouldn't have left my wife alone, seeing as how there's an eight-foot-tall and 300-pound evil flesh golem out on the loose with a vendetta against my very life and all I care about. Well, too late to do anything about it now. I'm all dressed up and ready for battle. But then, suddenly, from my wife's bedroom, I hear a frightful shriek and a terrible moan. I rush to my wife's bedroom, but alas, I am too late. The monster was lying in the bed with her with a sickening, satisfying grin on both their faces, and they were sharing a cigarette. Mmm, damn, that was good said my wife. What the hell is going on? I cried. Dude, you robbed me of my wedding night, so I robbed you of theirs. It's that simple, father. Damn it, I cried. I shall hunt you down and have my revenge as if it's the last thing that I do. do, do, do. And so... The mad doctor chased his creature around the world while listening to that catchy Benny Hill theme song on an infinite loop. Despite the fact that he had no idea where the creature was going or the faintest clue how to kill it. But finally, his epic quest for revenge brought him to the North Pole, where he froze to death after meeting Santa Claus and losing an arm wrestling match. The end. Oh, and the moral of, of this horrifying tale, children? Why, it's quite simple. Don't. Play. God. Happy Halloween, children. <laughs>